recording, what we're going to try and do is to demonstrate how to set up a video client, uh, one that uses IGMP to join a multi-task screen. Basically, this is what we're looking at. So we have a Spine Test Center set up as a video server. I'm just going to stream a video to uh, a video stream to 225001. And the DUT will then um, not forward that until a join from the Spine Test Center video client is sent to it. It'll then start forwarding the stream and then stop forwarding it slightly after the leave is sent. Okay. So in the video server, we went over that in the previous video. So just to review, uh, we look on that slot for a video stream, a video clip to serve out. Now there is always going to be a default video clip. So if you want to add more, go ahead and browse for them, and then upload them to your chassis, and they'll end up here. Okay. Next thing we do is we build this device block and we um, enable it as a server and then we associate this clip file list and so this will have all the a list of whatever video clips are on that slot right. so in this case we just chose the uh, default one and then the last thing we have to do to configure the video server is to associate um, tell the video server how, how we want to uh, serve that stream out. So we go to edit server streams and then in this case we're sending it all the videos out to the multi address 225001. We're encoding it in ITP and we're having it loop every time. Alright? So once we apply that and we start the video server we see the transmit rate go up. And so that's what we have charted here. This blue line is a transmit rate. Alright, so that configures this right side of the ladder diagram. Let's go ahead and configure this left side. Alright, so let's go ahead and add a device block. And that'll be on port 10 1. I'm just going to um, go ahead and finish that here and show you how to manually set that up. All right. Let's first name it video client. Right. Start off with our addressing. Okay, we have the unique address, MAC addresses, that's good. I'm going to change our IP address here. So now to match the DT, um, that port, the video client port, is connected to gig01, so 108051 would be the gateway address. 10.80.60.1 is the gateway address, and then we just put the host address on um, any address on that subnet. So that will do. Okay, so that sets up this tab. The video tab, we really don't have to do it in this uh, scenario where we're doing IGMP. We do not have to um, activate the client, but we do have to go to the IGMP MLB tab. Alright? Now we're going to activate that protocol on that device block. And notice here that we have a, a boot count of zero. So what we want to do is tell this video client to join that uh, that group, in this case 225001. So what we do there is go to Edit Group Membership. Now this will have a list of all the multicast group blocks that have been defined. Okay. Let me go ahead and close that and show you what I'm talking about. So when we go to all multicast groups, this shows us the multicast, what we call the multicast group block. Just like how these are device blocks, these are multicast group blocks. So we can go ahead and add them here. Right? This is the IPv4 group 1, 225001, one group. Or we could do it from edit group membership as well. And we can say add actually manage multicast group and we can it brings up that multicast group manager right so we already have that listed there so I'm just to show we can always add it again add another one there all right so now we want to associate it so we'll go ahead and add 
and we have that multi-cache group block and it associates this multi-cache group block IPv4 group 1 with this device video client so what happens is anytime we click on join or leave it will send joins and leaves to that multi-cache group block that we have defined already in this case that multi-cache group block only has one, one um, multi-cache group okay if it had 10 and we, and we clicked on 10 reports with 10 joins, it would send 10 joins out. Okay, again, we only have one. Alright, so basically what we have configured here is we have the, the client to send a join out to or leave out to C25001. Alright, so let's go ahead and apply that. Let me also save this. And let's do this. Let's go ahead and start capture. Okay. So what we're going to do is now send the join out. And you can see here on the chart that the event is uh, the join event is marked by this red dotted vertical line. And then you can see the uh, the rate comma here increment. And then we have that charted here as well. So yeah, the blue line is the transmit rate, and the goldish line is the receive rate both on different parts. Right? Now when we send the leave, that's also noted by this green vertical line, start sending leaves, and you see the receive rate drop. So you can see here, it's kind of graphically right here in between here, this is kind of a join or leave latency. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, stop our capture. and take a look at that. Okay, let me bring that down. I wonder if we've captured all the packets. Yeah, it didn't look like it. Oh, there is the lead. Okay, good. So we got them all. Very good. All right. So you see here the join ground, right? From 50.2 to uh, that multi-cache group, and we start seeing the multi-cache packets coming in, right? And then if we Join that's a query from the router, and there's a leave. So we send a leave, and then we still see some packets coming in, right? This is at 36 seconds, 36.7. And if we look at our last multicast packet, that's at 38.7, so about two seconds, right? And if we look at our chart back here, uh, it doesn't have it kind of cleared out already. Okay, oh. But you can see how that works. Now, we can also just to come take a look a little bit deeper into this packet here. If we decode this packet as IPP, we'll see that it's an MPEG2 transport stream as well as the video and audio stream. And you can kind of see uh, each of those and take the transport stream packet in here. Alright? So, okay, so let's see. Go back to our diagram. What we did, we already had this configured. We configured the video client by creating this device block and then creating a multicast group block and then associating that multicast group block with the device block. Okay? There's a multicast group block and then we associated that via the e edit group memberships to that device block called video client. Alright, so if that makes some sense, if you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks.